Good morning. Welcome to Mortality with me, your friendly life actuary, meaning I am all about death. So this morning I came across this blog post, COVID is now saving lives. Okay, let's look at it. More specifically, fewer people are now dying than would have been the case had there been no Wuhan epidemic. And I'm going to scroll down to, and not, I am not engaging with every detail in this blog post because there are certain things I do not want to talk about. So let me go down here. Ah, our, our special CDC dashboard, and we're going to visit this soon. And what is he noticing? That there are fewer people dying now. He's looking at these numbers here. If you can see the most recent uh, death numbers and you know it looks like an extrapolation of we have this peak kind of at the beginning of the year in January and then whoo it's coming on down hey and look it's way below what it was last year at the same time uh, this yellow line by the way is not at the expected number of deaths it's kind of a 95th percentile confidence interval based on rape and yada yada anyway um, so it's a lot lower than say let's go back to the last bad flu season we had which was winter of 2017 into 2018 and it goes again it goes over that little um, hump okay so oh wow deaths are down Let's address that one first. I'm going to go to the dashboard, and I, will, I just want to note, I am scrolling over a lot of text before I'm getting to the dashboard itself. And the reason I'm emphasizing that is there's information, and then there's information in the technical notes afterwards, that if you want to make some kind of comment about, you know, you're going to make a prediction about the future, that this is lower, Oh my gosh, April 10th, okay, it's about a couple weeks ago, week ending April 10th, way lower, awesome. So the first thing I'm going to do is go, I'm going to switch it, not even COVID, just excess deaths with and without waiting and update my dashboard. So let's take a look. Hmm, well, already I'm starting to see issues and that's, the actual number of reported deaths is a lot lower than that full bar. And that's what we saw actually in that first dashboard. It actually gives you the weighting. It just didn't show you how much of it was waiting. Okay. Um, that said, if you are a person who has not been looking at this every week for the past year, okay, maybe this hasn't existed uh, for an entire year, but almost a year at this point, um, you know that in general, they have underweighted the number of deaths. And, there's, and there are reasons for that. I'm not blaming the CDC that they're doing something bad. Uh, I think they're doing something that's appropriate for what they're trying to do. If they worked at an insurance company, though, as an actuary having to set IBNR, that's incurred but not reported deaths or death claims, they'd be fired because this would have been persistently under estimating the amount of death benefits you're going to have to pay and of course reality is going to set in at some point uh, these numbers are almost definitely going to come up okay um, I think it's premature to assume that in the last four weeks and and I'll just show you a little Twitter thread between me and another actuary who's in group insurance um, and I was talking about, and I'm still doing this, I'm, I'm trying to wrap up a couple of publications today for people who actually pay me on mortality trends. Um, and it's not only COVID, but I don't want to talk about it. I'm just going to talk total mortality. So this actuary asked me, um, how much do the numbers come up or how do I, I deal with this? So generally when I'm looking, I don't, for my own work, for people who pay me, I extract the data and I have it at different levels of detail. You go up here, you can see um, national and state estimates of excess deaths. I get it at the state level. I'm going to show you why. Um, I always pick on North Carolina first because they have the largest lag. Do you really think, first off, um, it only goes up to January 2nd. We are now on April 23rd today. Do you really think North Carolina deaths are that low? I'm going to tell you right now, no, they aren't. 
it's that their process is stuck on paper and they have a huge lag, like at least three months before they uh, get their death data, total death data to the CDC. Okay, and this has been the case forever. They're trying to transform over to the digital system everyone else uses. I'm gonna pick a couple other uh, states that don't have as huge of a lag problem, but still have a lag problem. Here's Delaware. I'm picking on some kind of small states. I had found, and I'm going to see, maybe they've updated it. There were some states with very odd looking patterns. Uh, no, South Dakota's not too bad. Well, let's look at big, let's look at big states. Um, just so you can see what it looks like. Even with California, there's a lag, and uh, the week April 10th is completely a projected number. They don't really have anything reported for that week. It's just an educated guess, trending what they already have. And that's generally what I do. Uh, I get rid of all of their waiting because I want to do my own waiting, uh, and then I might look at what their neighbors, what's happening to their neighbors. So I do that with North Carolina. Let me do New York. So we're seeing the New York numbers, and this is New York State less New York City. There were two waves, so we basically had no excess mortality in summer of 2020. It was just that spring 2020 wave and that winter wave. Uh, most places you don't really get three waves. Um, which is, I think, a function of the local climate, really, more than any, any government policy. I don't think it has much of an effect. So let's look at Georgia. Georgia does have three waves, but I think if we split it geographically, like Atlanta versus the rest of the state, uh, we might see a different pattern. But yeah, you can see it falls off, but that doesn't mean yet the April 10th week is completely projected, just like with California. Um, let's do New York City just because that one's so extreme. So New York City had that huge spring spike and a little bit of excess mortality in the winter. Um, it's hard to evaluate. They're pretty good, but again, they're they're kind of small. They're kind of big and kind of small that they can have their death reports up to date compared to a lot of other places. Let's just do D.C. And again, we get this big fall off because of the reporting lag. So going back to that blog post, no, yes, I, I see what, even if you put the waiting in, yes, in the, in the most recent four weeks, they're projecting to a lot lower than the mortality levels. And I mean, I can go straight across from 2019 or 2018. Well, the claim, um, and this is John, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to mispronounce your name, Heindraker, uh, is assuming those who have died with COVID on their death certificates would have passed away before long in any event. I am sorry, that is making a huge assumption. Now, if he's assuming that because he thinks deaths are way down, well, you're just wrong about deaths being way down. You're just premature, Okay. You're going to have to wait another four weeks to see if the April deaths really are in line with prior years or they're way below. So first off, you don't know that. But the other aspect are these comorbidities. So he's assuming that the people who died with COVID already were frail or fragile from one of the comorbidities that was listed. And we're getting a lot of the statistics with comorbidities. You need to understand what that means. All the comorbidities means doesn't mean it contributed to the death, doesn't mean it made death more likely, and I'm about to show you not a comorbidity, but a behavioral aspect uh, that it caused people to pay attention last year, and then it kind of got dropped, and there's a good reason it got dropped. Um, you see, okay, so many people are obese. Say 30% of the people who died with COVID on their death certificates were obese. Okay, is that high or is that low for obesity? I just made that number up, by the way, and I'm not looking up the statistics because every single dashboard I've seen showing comorbidities with those who died from COVID do not give me a base rate to compare against. For the relevant population, so let's say, just let's say New York State 
including New York City. Let's say 30% of the people who died with COVID were obese. Well, what percentage of the population is obese? Is it higher? Is it lower? And even there, you have to be careful because there is definitely an age structure to the COVID deaths. A lot of older people, and so I'm going to show that. Um, let's do it by age, if it's going to give me the right dashboard. So these are total deaths by age in normal years, and that's what we see with the gray lines. Uh, most deaths are old people. That's true in a year, in recent years. So we have this red line, which is 2020, and we see that deaths for those 85 years and older are way up, 75 to 84, way up, 65 to 74, up, even 45 to 64, up. Not as much, I, actually for under 25, we basically see no difference. And then 25 to 44, there is elevated mortality, not necessarily COVID though. Um, in any case, I, I mean, I'll give you one of the comorbidities, dementia, okay? So a lot of the people who died with COVID had Alzheimer's disease or other forms of senile dementia. Um, what percentage of the elderly have dementia? I'm going to tell you right now, it increases with increasing age, and it's higher for women than men at the same age. These are stats I know very well. Uh, you cannot tell me. What, what, if the, what if the connection is not that the dementia itself contributed to the death in addition to COVID, but that if you have dementia, you're more likely to be in a nursing home, and perhaps the people in nursing homes were more likely to die because of some bad policy decisions or because you're in a group living condition and so infectious disease spreads throughout that, no matter if the state's policy was good or bad by sending infected people back into the nursing homes, okay? It's, it's pretty complicated, uh, but the, the one correlation comorbidity I want to talk about in COVID is smoking. And by last year, around this time, it was noticed that there was a lower percentage of smokers hospitalized and dying from COVID. Now, here is a, a Nature article, and I'll provide the link below, you know, and they get into, they notice that the percentage of the people who were in the hospital were dying from COVID was lower than the general population. Um, so you can say that, and, and maybe something is up. I think think, yeah, protective effect of smoking. Maybe there's a protective effect of smoking. I have a guess, and I don't know if it's in here. here. Here's the possible protective effect of smoking, because I grew up with a smoker in the family. It's my father. He died age 38 from a heart attack. He had been smoking since he was, and it was a heavy smoker since he was 19 years old. Um, have you been around smokers, especially if you're a non-smoker in a non-smoker uh, situation? You know, you're usually not around smokers. How closely do you stand to a smoker compared to non-smokers? You give them a little more air, you know, a little more room, right? Especially if they smoke cigarettes. I mean, if it's a pipe smoker, ah, pipe smoke, love that. But cigarette smokes, oh my God, it's stinky. It's just, just awful. So you try to stay away from the smokers. It may be that the smokers were protected from just getting COVID in the first place because people didn't want to be close to them in the first place. Uh, that's a possibility that certain people are less likely to get certain kinds of infectious diseases because people interact with them less. Um, this is like with my son uh, in his school, various students have uh, tested positive for COVID in classrooms that he was in. Uh, and Dearman had to come home, get quarantined and tested and yada, yada. He never caught COVID. Well, Dermot is on the autism spectrum and no, he's not high. I mean, he's like in the middle. You can't miss it. Uh, no, he's generally not getting very close to people. It's not that he avoids people. It's just that he's not as into being close up and interacting with people. He does not interact face to face with other students. He tends to play by himself even in his own classroom with other um, kids in special education, you know, they're separated. They don't really get within six feet of each other. That's, they're not very huggy. They're not really, you know, into that. 
So there can be correlations, but you have to be careful about the cause and effect chain. So it is too soon. It may be true that more fragile people died in 2020 and they would have died in 2021. Obviously, they still died early um, compared to what, where they would have been. Uh, and it remains to be seen. We don't have those numbers yet. Okay. So, you know, don't assume if you're trying too hard. Okay. This has been difficult. It's been a difficult year for everybody. Difficult for more some people more than others. But you notice I, I, I do get a bit exasperated, exasperated sorry, uh, with seeing the same damn arguments over and over again because it's new to them, okay? If this was someone who had been looking at this every week for a year, they would have known, you know, it's a little premature to say that's where the April 10th deaths are going to end up. It may come up. And I've, I've seen that happen time and again. So I'm not saying it's below for good. I do want to say there may be lives saved from COVID, but not what's being said here. Because of course, saying lives are saved, uh, I think that's just kind of a clickbait uh, title. He wasn't really saying that because he's like, oh, it, it's like saying, oh, they died in the Battle of the Somme and therefore didn't die of the Spanish flu because one occurred years before the other. Oh, you know, they died in the sinking of the Titanic and therefore they didn't die during the Great Depression. Obviously, one year comes before another. That doesn't really save lives. That said, like the total number of lives, total number of deaths in 2021 is almost definitely going to be lower than 2020. And, and that's just because there won't be as much excess mortality. We're hoping with the vaccines and uh, epidemics do burn themselves out even without vaccines. And I don't want to talk about herd immunity. There's other mechanisms going on too, and it can come back. Okay, so he just means like in absolute numbers. And he also means in rates. He does talk about rates. So if the frailer people die off, those who are left behind should actually have a lower mortality rate than those who died. You killed off the most vulnerable. Again, I am saying that's premature. I have not seen that that is the case. And it does take a lot more time than you think to be able to tease apart uh, those um, those effects to get difference in rates. In insurance companies, we need a base of thousands of deaths. And some of the mortality uh, experience studies that I've seen or been involved with, we often have to aggregate groups because we don't have enough deaths within a cell. That means like a demographic cell of an age group or an underwriting class to actually be able to make a statistically, and I don't mean significant, but just that it makes sense or that we can actually show a difference other than just randomness. Uh, so it's going to take longer than you think to tease those things apart. But what I'm arguing about, COVID may actually save lives in the long run to the extent First, people have not been taking infectious disease in the developed world very seriously. And um, we've all always been vulnerable to this kind of pandemic that could have been much worse. It could have been like the Spanish flu. This was not the Spanish flu. Um, yeah, people go, oh, it's just the flu. I'm sorry, just the flu doesn't do this pattern. Okay, this is this is a huge increase in deaths and I mean, I'll just look at, I'll just show you the age ones here. Definitely in the first quarter, so January through March of 2021, it's going to be higher number of deaths, higher mortality rate uh, than prior years, um, other than obviously 2020. Whether we get back to normal levels remains to be seen for 2021. Um, but lives may be saved because people start thinking a little bit more. We, we've been having all these deaths from flu and pneumonia every year. Maybe we can dampen that down a little bit with mask wearing, or maybe it doesn't have an effect, unfortunately. Could be. Uh, but the other thing is we have this new type of vaccine, the mRNA vaccines. 
Uh, we'll see how well these work, but what if these get deployed for other diseases as well? Um, it may help, you know, having this technology developed and looking at rapid vaccine development may ultimately, in the long run, tamp down mortality from infectious diseases, and it can be worldwide. So I'm focusing on the developed world. Obviously, infectious disease is still a huge cause of death in many countries around the world, just in general, not the United States or Europe or um, or Japan, you know, or South Korea, um, Australia, you know, the countries that most people are dying <laughs> from stuff like heart disease and cancer. Um, so I'm really hopeful that there are some good news coming out of this, but that people died in 2020 instead of dying in 2021 is not what I consider good news, um, you know. So that's my comment for today. I'll put the links to all of the items that I have here in the comments for, um, or I'm sorry, in the description for this video on YouTube, and you can follow them for yourselves. Um, you know, I'm just you got to laugh because and crying or getting angry about these um this misunderstanding I'll just I'll call it this misunderstanding of what's going on and still trying to grab for certainty where there's not certainty yet it it's fine sometimes we just don't know there are multiple possibilities it could be the case that deaths for the entire year would be on track again, maybe, but maybe it really is just going to be extra deaths for 2021 as well. And 2022, we'll see. So I'll be watching the trends, even if everyone else loses interest and talk to you all later.